Well, Santa Claus may have come early for quantum investors as we saw D-Wave Quantum explode by 20% today. We saw CCCX, the inflection SPAC merger, gain 13% on the trading day. Regetti was up 13% and we saw tons of buying down the quantum watch list. Today, we're going to look at markets, news and charts, and we're going to try to get in and out of here in about 15 to 18 minutes is my goal. We're going to look at a bunch of different quantum and non quantum stocks. We are in the midst of historically what is called the Santa Claus rally. It begs the question, are we going to see this Santa Claus rally continue and will quantum stocks continue? their own rally that they're having. So we're gonna explore all of that in this video. If you haven't already, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and let's jump right in. All right, so the fear and greed index, we're actually in the green, and we haven't been in greed or extreme greed for probably almost two full months. So it's pretty nice to see that investors right now are generally less fearful. That helps a lot, especially since personally, my portfolio is a lot of higher beta, higher risk stocks that tend to sell off when the market is fearful or extremely fearful, but people tend to get a little bit more optimistic when the market is greedy or extremely greedy. Just taking a look at the QQQ, we're very close to all time highs. We're not too far away. It is looking possible if we have more days like this that we can make that 2% jump and make new all time highs on the NASDAQ. Looking at the stock heat map today, Google continues its strength. It's had one heck of a year. Nvidia had a nice bid today. Tesla, I believe, made its all time high again today. So very nice to see. And Oracle's having a little bounce. It's been absolutely beaten to a pulp this year. Let's start with the emerging quantum watch list. So we're seeing this company QBTQF, which is, let me double check, 22% on the day. This is Super Q Quantum. And I haven't had a chance to look at them for a long time, but I'll have to refresh myself. That's a pretty big move. So we'll take a look at that. We saw that inflection had a 13% day and at one point was trading at almost $16 a share. 01 Quantum had an 8% day and then this SPAC merger with Horizon Quantum, 1.5%. IonQ has an investment there. And then CHAC, which is the SPAC merger for Xanadu, also had a little... The Quantum watch list was very green and very pretty today. D-Wave was up 20%. CCCX was up 13%, Regetti is up 13%, QUBT 13%, IonQ 11%. So for those who have held through all of this volatility we've had for the last 45 to 60 days, congratulations on the gains today. It is never a dull moment as a quantum investor as we're seeing crazy swings all the time, but this was certainly a very green and bullish day down the watch list for quantum investors. And then taking a look at this other portfolio here, and then taking a look at some of my other holdings, Red Cat was up 14%, Poet is having a super nice end of the year, and they have that connection to QUBT. Resolve has been super beaten up since I got into the stock, but it's having a little bit of a bounce. Grab is even up 5%, Joby, we'll look at Joby's chart, it's creeping back up into relevance. So maybe the biggest news in the quantum sector today is quantum emotion became the top holding in the Defiance Quantum ETF. And I've talked and I made specific videos about the Defiance Quantum ETF. The ticker symbol is QTUM. And they manage a bunch of quantum and non-quantum stocks and they've been around for a while now. And basically what happened here is in December 2025, QTOM increased its position in quantum emotion to approximately 2.18% of the ETF's portfolio, representing 18.48 million shares with more than $3 billion in assets under management. QTOM is the world's leading pure play quantum computing ETF. So you can check out their ETF and all their holdings on their website, but this is huge news to have the QTUM 
ETF buying such a massive holding. In fact, why don't we just go look at their holdings? So there it is. We're at the QTUM Defiance ETF full holdings, and we can see that Quantum Emotion Core is sitting there with 18,479,000 shares and only entity has more shares, but is less weighted in the portfolio. Pretty amazing to see that. Let's take a look at the portfolio weighting. So QNC is also the highest weight in the portfolio as well. And this is a portfolio that holds Palantir, Rigetti, IonQ. So they are seeing something over at QTUM Defiance ETF in Quantum Emotion. And of course, I did make that big video over the weekend that goes does a deep dive into Quantum Emotion. So if you're interested in their technology, their offering or the stock, take a look at that video. Um, I put a lot of research into it, so I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we also saw this that could have helped D-Wave today. So D-Wave is gonna bring commercial quantum computing to CES 2026 showcasing its award-winning technology and real-world customer success stories. So CES 2026 is happening in Las Vegas, January 7th and 8th at the Fountain Blue. And they're gonna, they're gonna have Murray Tom there. Murray has been on the show before here, and he'll present a master class and demo on January 7th from 1 to 1.30. Very nice to see. I think that contributed to the optimism and buying and why D-Wave led the pack today. So Wall Street discovered quantum computing stocks in 2025. We can see that quantum has been a theme not only for the retail investor, but also Wall Street. And heading into 2026, IonQ and D-Wave Quantum hold the most buy ratings along with the highest price targets. And we have price targets from IonQ now on Wall Street ranging from 60 to 75 to $100 a share. And remember when I was posting videos about this six months, four months ago, it was unheard of that I was saying that there, that these stocks could be at these price points. And now you have multiple Wall Street analysts basically coming out and, and saying that. So, so IonQ has a strong buy with 12 ratings, an average price of 75.91 and price targets ranging from 60 to 100. D-Wave Quantum here has a 13 buy rating, zero hold and zero sell with a price target of 35, 45, 46, 44 upgrades all over the place. So we can see Wall Street has got a lot more bullish on quantum, especially to end the year. People kind of tend to follow the money and so does the, the stock price. So let's take a look at one of the big investors. So billionaire Ken Griffin just bought a quantum computing stock that could soar as much as 101% according to Wall Street. So according to its latest 13F filing in third quarter, Citadel purchased 169,000 shares of D-Wave Quantum, increasing its stake in the quantum computing pure play by 201%. Pretty amazing there. We've got another big piece of news hopefully coming by the end of year in the quantum sector. We have Rigetti Computing, who in their third quarter financial results gave us this update. On the technology front, we remain on track to deliver our 100 plus qubit chiplet based quantum system with an anticipated 99.5% median two qubit gate fidelity by the end of 2025. I have been quite a bit more active over on X. If you'd like to engage with me over there, it's Quantum Bull HQ. So I did make a post on X today about the Rigetti price movement and will they deliver the 100 qubit chiplet based system on schedule? Do you guys think that they're gonna deliver on this milestone? I have never been given a reason to doubt Rigetti or Dr. Kulkarni, although they are waiting till the last minute. So time is of the essence here for Rigetti. Let's see if they can pull through at the end of the year here. So looking at the four hour chart for IonQ, I do like what I'm seeing developing for IonQ. What we saw for a very long time was IonQ was kind of stuck under 48. And what's happened here is it looks like that might be flipping to support. So we might start to see that INQ, which is what I'm actually hoping for, can just hang out 
around this 48 to 60 price range and kind of stay range bound until there's a catalyst that pushes it higher. I think unhealthy price movements like this will follow unhealthy price drops to the bottom. But if we can just kind of hold and build up some support at a certain price level, that's what I'd like to see. Historically, IonQ as a stock has done exactly this. It has built up a lot of price between a certain range. So before it was 35 to 48, I'd love to see it build up some price between 50 and 60. That would be my next goal window. We'll see what happens. Will this spark some upward price movement? And are people gonna be buying with those numbers in the back of their head? All those Wall Street price targets are very bullish and are actually above the all-time high for INQ right now. A lot of Wall Streeters have the stock at $100 as their price target. Okay, Rigetti. So Rigetti had a big move today and Rigetti has been beaten down considerably. And there's been some sentiment shift in Rigetti, you can feel, because Rigetti kind of grinds in silence. They're one of those companies that they don't do a lot of press, they don't overpromise, they don't release a million pub, um, press releases to the public. They just work on building quantum computers and their next big test is can they deliver this 100 qubit 99.5% two qubit gate fidelity? If they do, and if we stay in this market backdrop with the current sentiment, which is on the greed side, I could see investors getting very excited about Rigetti's progress. And I'm still seeing potentially a move into this zone. Previously, Rigetti was hanging around in this $36 to $48 a share. So don't be surprised if Rigetti has a big move if they deliver on their hardware goal. All right, D-Wave Quantum. So D-Wave is having one heck of a, a push to the end of this year. We just looked at Rigetti and we could kind of see in Rigetti's chart that it's lost a lot of its gains and it's just kind of suppressed. But D-Wave is pushing back in. It's really getting back into this fold. This is a really impressive candle. And we're kind of getting back into this 32 to 38 zone. And I would love to see D-Wave stabilize in this 32 to 38 and just kind of hang out there for a little while until its next catalyst. Now we do have Qubits 2026 coming up, which is their yearly conference. And I just have this nagging feeling that Alan has something up his sleeve at that conference that maybe he's saving for the Qubits 2026 attendees. Now I could be wrong, but maybe they have a new tech announcement, a new partnership. We know that Anduril and at and are going to be at D-Wave this year. So I'm very much looking forward to what is coming out and I will be at that conference. I'm looking forward to it. CLSQ, so LAS has been struggling a little bit. It looks, the chart looks a little bit more like Rigetti to me. It lost a lot of its pump to 850. It's down to about three and a half bucks and it closed around four and a half dollars, 450. At least it's not below 388. We know that's been a big pain. And overall, the trend is still in the right direction. What CLSQ desperately needs to do is they need to find customers and expand into the US market. And I know there's been some controversial posts that Carlos has made in regards to Europe and the sovereignty and the US and, and that type of thing. And that type of like political post can detract from the main mission, which is to build post quantum future, build hardware that is quantum resistant and quantum safe. So I think that just staying on topic and on track is very important. I know that Carlos is a philosopher and I know that he is a very passionate person. And that's just part of kind of what you get. You, you have all these CEOs and their personalities and they do affect kind of the shareholder and the impression of the company. Okay, so taking a look at the eVTOL space, we're just gonna do a quick stop here. Um, really, Archer and Joby are pretty far off their recent 52 week highs. So Archer actually was trading at $14 a share and we closed at $8.40. Joby's held up much better. Their technology 
is is better. Their engineering's they're a little bit further ahead on the engineering. Both companies, I still think Archer and Joby have a lot of upside from here. I really like the entry for Archer at this eight dollar. As you can see, it's it's kind of a, a flowing and volatile stock, but this is one of its troughs. And Joby has shown us a couple times that it can get up to that psychological $20, $21 a share figure. So they just need their next catalyst, their next big deal, just visibility for commercial revenue. And these stocks, I think, will move a lot in 2026, 2027, and 2028. I'm very excited, very bullish on the Evitol space. Veritone. So we've had the CEO of Veritone on a couple of times. Veritone had this spike up to nine and a half dollars. They quickly unceremoniously diluted. They got themselves out of some debt. That's great. The stock recovered a little bit up to about seven and a half dollars. And then it sold down quite a bit to about this 378. It's shown some strength and stability and it's around five dollars a share. I do think that Veritone is one of those stocks that on any given random day you could wake up and it's a 20 30 percent up day or a 10 15 20 percent down day you just never know what you're going to get with veritone it's still got a lot to prove but there are bullish price targets out on the street for veritone stock that i bought a little bit more of today is o1 quantum i'm just establishing establishing positions early in these quantum cybersecurity. if someone's trying to build quantum safe future I want to be behind it with my dollar and Owen Quantum's 50 cents a share. I would be okay losing my entire investment. I have a couple thousand shares. If they do well, great. If they don't, that's okay. I want to support these companies that are trying to build a quantum safe future. And finally, our two SPAC mergers. We have Churchill Capital Group that had the best day that it's had in a long time. Of course, we had inflections. Matt Kinsell on the show. I think that should be mandatory viewing if you're interested in quantum investing and you're new to this sector. I still think that Inflection is one of the strongest companies and only because of this SPAC merger, this stock is $15 a share. I do really think that this stock is closer to an INQ as far as valuation. And I think the market will see that as well. So assuming the SPAC mar merger goes well, early next year is where we're hoping that that goes through. And I think that inflection can get re-rated very quickly. So I am super bullish on inflection. One of my favorites, if not favorite quantum stock at this point. And Crane Harbor Acquisition Corp, AKA Check. So this is where Xanadu announced their merger. And can you believe this? Xanadu, this merger, since it was announced, this popped up so you can buy Xanadu for less than when it was announced that Xanadu was going public. And Photonics is a super promising modality. Xanadu has a proven track record. I've been buying shares, buying, buying, buying shares. And you guys know I have shares in a bunch of different quantum companies. It's not a surprise that I'm buying shares in these um, emerging quantum companies as well as the sector grows. Um, I'm happy to support these new companies coming into the fold. All right, guys. So we had an amazing Monday and our own little Santa rally in the quantum sector. Do you think this continues? Do you think we see some cooling down? I'm very excited about quantum emotion. I'm excited about these SPAC mergers and I'm excited to see the space growing. I'm very optimistic for 2026, 2027 and beyond as far as quantum is concerned. I still think these stocks are a buy, hold and wait until at least 2028. All of these stocks, especially the stocks I've showed you today, carry a lot of risk. They can move up or down 20% in one day. So you should never invest more than you're willing to lose. And none of this is financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. I hope you guys enjoyed the market today. And I hope this Santa Claus rally for quantum can continue. We'll see you in the next one. If you would like to support the quantumbull.com and the Quantum Bull YouTube channel, I do have YouTube memberships here. 
Each of them has exclusive perks. The Gold Bull membership gets you into our Discord with trade alerts, and we have a lot of fun over there. So I invite you to come join as a channel member.